Now we want to bring in Ben Rhodes, former Deputy National Security Advisor to President Obama. He's an MSNBC political contributor. Ben, thanks so much for being here today. We really appreciate it. Obviously, a lot going on. And as we are on the air right now, we know that those talks between Russia and Ukraine are happening on the Belarus border. A lot of questions about how serious these talks are and what exactly they can yield. Are you hopeful at all that there could be any type of progress or breakthrough from these talks, Ben? Not particularly, Kristen. I mean, I think if anything, it'll be an opportunity to see if any of those Russian demands have changed at all. Because um, thus far, the demands have been so maximalist, Ukraine essentially surrendering its own sovereignty over to Russia. And it's clear that Ukrainian public opinion has deeply, deeply hardened against making any concessions along those lines. So I think what we'll be able to suss out from the readouts from these talks is just whether or not there's been any flexibility on the Russian side, given the enormous resistance that they face, not just in Ukraine, but globally. And Ben, this is a striking moment, right? Because you have the Belarusians, you have the Belarusian president, a close ally of Vladimir Putin, effectively saying, hey, we're going to make sure this is a safe setting for the Ukrainians and the Russians to meet. While at the same time, we are learning that Belarus is prepared to join the fight with Russia against Ukraine right now. So if Belarus does that, how does it change the dynamic there? You have Russia and another foreign country together attacking Ukraine. Well, I think thus far, you know, one of the underappreciated stories is just how much Belarus has also lost its sovereignty. I mean, Lukashenko, the leader of Belarus, who really is not legitimate, he clearly uh, seized power after losing a popular election. He's basically turned himself into an extension of Vladimir Putin's uh, regime. He's not only invited these Russian troops in and allowed it, Belarus to be a staging ground, he's now talking about contributing Belarus troops to this operation. He's talking about lifting the prohibition on nuclear weapons in Belarus, which could be a pretext for Russia to move some of its nuclear arsenal into Belarus. The challenge for him, though, is that this war is probably enormously unpopular amongst the people of Belarus who already do not uh, support Lukashenko's reign. So he's going to have to be careful, too, about whether or not his own people up, uh, 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 conduct an uprising in that country. You've already seen protests against Lukashenko. So it's a very volatile situation uh, in Belarus right now. It's a really good point, Ben. And we've obviously also seen those protests in Russia as well, which I think surprised a lot of people there. Let me ask you about Russian leader Vladimir Putin. There's been a lot of talk about the fact that he is so isolated, even more isolated in the wake of COVID, a very small group of people around him. And over the weekend, I want to read you, former Secretary of State Condoleezza Rice said, quote, he seems erratic. There is an ever deepening delusional rendering of history, a pretty stark description there. How dangerous does this isolation make him and our intelligence forces, based on your conversations, concerned that he is not acting rationally, Ben? Yeah, I mean, some of the people I've talked to have been raising this concern for a while now. Um, the reality is, during the eight years I was in the White House, uh, the circle around Putin tightened significantly just in that time period. Uh, and by the time he made that speech, it felt like it was down to a circle of one, Kristen. It felt like this was a man who was only listening to the voices in his own head. Uh, and frankly, if you look at his advisors who brought, brought in front of him in these kind of Potemkin briefings as if he's the czar, they look uncertain. They look a little afraid. Um, it, this does not seem to be like a system that is functioning beyond the whims of one man, one rule. And when you're in a circumstance now where he is clearly overreached, and not only is he facing significant military and popular resistance in Ukraine, he is facing a degree of sanctions from not just the United States, but a unified Europe, that I just don't think he expected. And if you are Russian and you're waking up today with the entire economy crater cratering, with the incapacity perhaps to even access your own reserves, the over $600 billion that are in that Russian central bank, you, you know you're in a circumstance where Russia's relationship with the rest of the world will never be the same so long as Vladimir Putin is the leader of Russia. And, and so this is kind of existential for Putin. And I think that that means we're in for very uncertain times ahead. And as you talk about those uncertain times, Ben, and you say this is existential for Vladimir Putin and his leadership there, we are all obviously sounding alarm bells over his message this weekend that he is putting the Russian deterrent, nuclear deterrent forces on a high state of alert right now. President Biden is trying to downplay that risk right now. But how concerning, how alarming is that? And is it a real threat? I mean, I think you have to take it seriously, of course, whenever you have a step like that. I, I do think there's a degree of posturing from Putin 
when it comes to this. We saw him in the run-up uh, to the launch of this invasion, you know, overseeing nuclear military exercises. I think clearly he's just trying to remind the world that Russia has a nuclear deterrent. Um, but the idea that, that this would be a real option for him in response to, to sanctions, uh, I, I think this is more Russia uh, just sending that message that uh, if this situation escalates, remember, we have these nuclear weapons. I think the challenge here, though, is Vladimir Putin is not the kind of man who likes to take off ramps, particularly when he's invested basically his entire credibility and his leadership right. in this war in Ukraine. And so it's hard to see how this situation ends uh, absent, like, protracted conflict, not just in Ukraine, but between the West and Russia itself. Of course, all the more concerning when you say that his inner circle has become smaller, now a circle of one. Ben Rhodes, we appreciate your perspective and expertise. Thank you very much. Yeah, always great. Thanks. To